I'm trying to think of the best way to describe that game because it was it was solid. It was nothing special, but I don't know. We just picked up a 2-0 win against Portsmouth away from home and you just never know with these types of games. It's always a little bit tricky. You don't know if maybe you should be going for the weaker team, you know, play some of the kids for ex some experience or do you play a full strength side or do you play a bit of everything? And I think we went with a very young team with a couple of players in there that uh, bring a bit more experience. We also had Pablo Mari, Mari, however you want to say his name, make his competitive debut. He has played a few times for the under 23s, I believe. He's played, he's played one or two games to get some fitness and some sharpness. And I thought he was decent tonight. Uh, the first thing I want to do, though, is go over to my phone screen. So you can see here we have the uh, FOTMOB app up. They have sponsored this episode. So make sure you check them out in the description if you want to download it. It's 100% free. iOS, Android, and you've got everything football at your fingertips. So what I wanted to do was look at the lineup today because I always like to look at their rating. So Arsenal's rating overall was 7.4. That's actually pretty decent. A lot of times, even with a really decent win, some players really draw that down. Uh, but everyone is a solid kind of mid-sevens there. Torreira picked up an injury, so that doesn't really count. And I'll talk about that in a moment. But uh, here we've got Socrates being man of the match with an 8.2 rating. And Nketiah very close behind with an 8.1 so uh, it's interesting. We're going to go through the entire lineup today because I don't think the game itself was that interesting. But thank you once again to FOTMOV for sponsoring this video. Make sure you check them out down below. So I don't have a problem with us rotating goalkeepers. So let's let's talk let's talk about Martinez first because I think he had a, an okay game. What I am glad to see though is when we were in the Europa League, we still went with Leno. This is something I've talked about since. Well, at least when Czech signed on um, and last season, especially with um, with Emery in charge, we had a goalkeeper for the Premier League and then a goalkeeper for the Cups. Uh, whether that was Ospina or whether it was Martinez last year, there's nothing really wrong with it. But I'm I'm a massive fan of playing players that should play, that are in form and that are doing well. And Leno should be starting every game in that situation, right? Um, but... To be fair, now that we're out of the Europa League, is there any need to, to worry about having Martinez in goal in the uh, in the FA Cup, for example? I, I'm not so sure it's a big deal, but it's worth mentioning that clearly Arteta does favour having one solid goalkeeper choice, but he's fine with rotating it should he want to. And maybe Leno's just distraught after what happened against Olympiacos, because technically... Their last minute winner was because of a corner he gave away. Who knows? Maybe it's a message from Arteta saying, you know, you may be a great keeper, but if you keep messing up, we're playing Martinez. But I thought he was OK. Socrates, who was man of the match on FootMob, at least. I, I personally wouldn't give him man of the match, but he had a decent game. And he was playing at right back and scored, made some decent charges forward. And defensively, he was strong. Not a standout performance, but still very solid. But let's talk about. Socrates being at right back. What's going on there? Because on the bench, you've got Maitland-Niles, who, let's be fair, 80% of his uh, appearances for Arsenal have been at right back. And he's done a very good job there. I I've got to be questioning, I'm sure we're all wondering the same thing, why he's not starting there and we're going with Socrates, who, again, has done a good job tonight. But it it there's something going on there. And uh, I was talking about it on Twitter. Shameless plug. Please do follow my Twitter. If you like these videos, you'll like my Twitter because I just talk about football um, and other things, a little bit of gaming every now and again. But I mentioned how I think that Maitland-Niles has potentially gone to Mikel Arteta and said, look, I don't want to play right back. It's not for me. Please don't put me there. I'd rather play in midfield or on the right wing. He came on on the right side for the last few minutes of the game. So when Torreira got injured, Ceballos came on. And I was thinking at the time that when Torreira did go off, and by the way, I'm not sure how serious the injury was. He looked to be in a lot of pain. He was stretched off. I think he was seen by the ambulance crew, but didn't go to hospital. So hopefully it's nothing too serious. But I'm thinking at that point, maybe this is a chance for Ainsley Maitland-Niles to play in midfield. I think we'd all like to see it again. He's done it a couple of times and didn't really show what he's got. But Ceballos comes on and you've got to be thinking to yourself... Why? We're playing in the cup, which we know we can play a few kids. 
we were playing a lot of the young players that maybe don't usually start. You know, for example, Reese Nelson doesn't get much time in the Premier League. Perfect in the cup, right? Same with Willock a little bit. Um, yeah, it's, it's an odd one because if you're going with Ceballos in that situation when you've got Ainsley Maitland-Niles who potentially, I don't know if this is true or not, but has said he'd rather play in midfield, why not give him the chance? And I think that could be almost proof that this has happened and that Arteta's just not happy with that. You know, if you're, if you're a player for Arsenal, you, you play in any position the manager puts you in the team. He was really solid at right back most times. And I'm very, I'm kind of sad that this might be something that's happened because I do like Maitland-Niles. I rate him as a footballer. Um, whether or not right back is his best position, I think right now it could be, maybe not in the future. You think he would get in, right? At least come on as a sub, as a central midfielder as well. But no, Sabayos getting the nod ahead of him. That must hurt a little bit. I, I hope I'm wrong and I hope this isn't what's happened. But if Ainsley McNars has said, I don't want to play right back, I'm not going to, play me midfield or nothing, pretty much, then Arteta's well within his right to not bring him on early. But then again, he did come on at the end. Who knows if that was just a pity substitution. But I think it's it's worth mentioning because I, I do, I like Ainsley McNars. He's a hard worker. He uh, reminds me of Ozil a little bit with the lacklustered kind of lethargic, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, it's like an aura. He looks like he's not really trying, but actually he is. He's a good player and um, it, it'd be a shame to lose him potentially just because he's not playing where he wants to play because I don't think he would get in many other teams in that kind of top eight, top six. But anyway, let's talk about the centre-backs, especially Mari. We, we, we've talked about David Luiz all season. You know, there's there's positives and negatives negatives to him. When he's on the ball and making a pass forward, quite often it's it's quite effective, but defensively he can be a little bit yeah, um, I thought he was OK tonight. Captain tonight as well, which was interesting, seeing as he's only been here for eight months or seven months. Crazy. But obviously, a, a lot of our proper pen penalty, a lot of our proper captains weren't playing today. But on the left side, we had Mario. And it, it was the weirdest thing seeing an Arsenal centre back that's left footed. It's It's beautiful. It really is fantastic. I'm a huge fan of... A centre-back partnership, one who's right-footed, one who's left-footed. It brings a bit more balance. It means you can shift the ball left and right a bit more easily, maybe. Uh, it's not a massive deal. You know, we've dealt with it. Koscielny was a great example. He always played on that left side of the, the partnership, and he was fine with, with his right foot. But it is nice. It is very nice to see. It opens up his body to go in that direction more so than it goes. It, it just it works better. It's typical because a lot of big clubs do that. You know, if you think Bayern, Barcelona, they, they all go with that left-footed, left, left centre-back. Um, not everyone, but I, I like it. And it was really good. And I thought he was very impressive tonight. He's very calm on the ball. Very, uh, he's got that kind of flair about him, that Spanish, Brazilian type. You know, he, he, he's got, I think, a very good future here if he is solid defensively because he suits our play at the back. And he, he looked good tonight. And on the left with Saka, who basically plays as a left winger, it, it worked quite well. But again, we're playing against Portsmouth. You know, I'd really like to see, well, we've got Man City coming up soon. If Mari starts in that, it's going to be interesting to see him up against Jesus, Aguero, De Bruyne, you know, these kind of players that are at the very top of their game. It's it's going to be a real test for him, but promising from him. I, I, I was relatively pleased um we spoke about Torreira he's gone off with a, a nasty injury I don't know if it was his knee or his ankle or if it was just the leg in general but he looked to be in a lot of pain it was a pretty tough tackle but a fair one and he's only five foot five or whatever so he's he's gonna get battered in those kind of challenges hopefully he's not out for too long um but I thought he was he was doing okay until he came off but then of course Sabios came in did his usual flicking the ball back then that way then that way and just turning constantly he, he, he just doesn't seem to find the pass and just get on with things he, he likes to take his time which is is fine whatever we then had Willock in there um we Xhaka came on towards the end let me just double check this because we um yeah so Xhaka came on in a few moments before the end of the time so was it Gendouzi that came off I can't remember but Gendouzi I thought had a solid game a bit of a headless chicken once again but he's so He's so, in a nice way, he's a bit of a, a child, you know, he's a bit mischievous. He, he wants to do the right thing, but sometimes maybe doesn't. It, it can still work. 
I don't get a good feeling sometimes when his uh, his back's facing the attack and he's facing the goal. It's kind of a bit like, oh, I, I'm always worried he's going to do something wrong. But to, to be fair to the guy, he had a good game and he got a stupid yellow card. I don't know where I stand on this. If you haven't seen it already, he basically sarcastically picked up the ball and slammed it down because Mike Dean, the referee, we'll talk about him, as usual, wants to be the centre of attention. He kept asking Guendouzi to move it, move, move the ball because he wasn't taking it in the right spot or something. So he, he did it sarcastically and he yellow carded him. Now... I get that Genduzi is probably a bit of a brat and he's a bit annoying when you're the referee, but there is, I don't think there's a rule in the, in the referee's notepad of rules, the rule book, that you can yellow card someone for kind of just joking. I, he didn't say anything mean to Mike Dean as far as I can see. He didn't do anything wrong. So it's a real weird one, that. And I think it is a, another example of Mike Dean just trying to be a showman, centre of attention. You know, that's what he's like. And we all know he hates Arsenal. I'm not a fan of Mike Dean. I'm sure he's a nice guy in real life, but for me, he shouldn't be refereeing Arsenal games. If you've seen the last 10, 15 years, the examples really do add up. And yeah, I don't, I don't think he should be, he should be refereeing Arsenal games. But of course, we can't, we can't ask for that. That's not going to work. But uh, he wasn't terrible today. I, I'd just like to know your opinion on that. I think it's different when you're in that position. If you're trying to tell Genduzi to do something, and he, he's maybe a little bit on purpose being a bit of a dick about it, you know, and then he's he's all sarcastic. Maybe, maybe you show him that yellow card and you say, look, stop pissing around. Okay, I'm in charge here. Respect me. I'm the referee. But then there's me thinking, you, you're just giving out a yellow card just because, you know. So not not really decided on that. But Genduzi was was pretty decent tonight. We had uh, Reese Nelson on the right, Martinelli on the left, and we had Enketia up top. Um, Reese Nelson wasn't bad, by the way, but I don't think he was good. I think he, he was okay. Does he have a future at Arsenal? I, I'm debating yes or no. It's it's a real tough one. Martinelli, I think, has a much, much brighter spark within him. He's a bit more of an exciting player than Reese Nelson, but who knows where Reese Nelson will end up. But I know Martinelli is going to go right to the top. He he said something incredible in the, uh, the build-up, you know, that he wants to just give everything for Arsenal. He wants to win the Champions League with his club and become a legend. But everyone's going to say that when they're breaking into the team. And it doesn't... I mean, I, I love the kid, right? It's brilliant that he's saying these things. But we all know if Barcelona, Madrid, PSG, you know, all these big teams, PSG maybe not. But, you know, the, big, the Titans in, in Spain, for example, if they come calling... He's going. So I don't want to, I'm not going to take what he said as he's going to stay with us no matter what he wants to, he wants to be a legend at the club because it won't, it won't happen. I, I, I think he can be that great player, but I just don't think it will happen here. I think from what I've heard that we're, we're going to be financially ruined this summer if we don't get any European football, that's the kind of thing that maybe we start looking at youngsters that are worth a lot of money. Again, Doozy's market value is over 50 million. Wouldn't surprise me if Martinelli isn't far behind. So maybe not this year, maybe not the next year, but in a couple of seasons that we kind of just cash in on these guys and then they become true greats. You know, I can, I can see Martinelli ending up at Barcelona when he's 24, 25 and just killing it. It's very early to tell, but that's how I feel these things will probably go. But Nketiah really, really has impressed me once again. He has scored yet again. Ian Wright reborn. He is just... Fox in the box. He's always in the right place at the right time. He's just got a great finish. And uh, I was really pleased to see him get another goal. His reception was good. He's always doing that same celebration. That everyone, did you call me? Yeah, I'm here. It's, uh, it's, it's great to see some of the youngsters come through the ranks over the last 18 months or so. And I think we are starting to see the true young players of our future. I don't think one or two of them will actually make it. Emile Smith-Rowe is, is one that I'm really excited to see play for us more in the future when he comes back. He's doing very well out on loan at Huddles, Huddersfield, I think it is. So he's, he's doing well, and I think he is one for the future. Just not so sure about Reese Nelson. Um, it's it's an interesting one. I, I'm, I'm definitely keen on seeing how he progresses in the next 18 months or so. But hey, look, tonight was about bouncing back. We had a terrible result on Thursday, and it's nice to come back tonight with a win, no matter who the opposition is. A lot of bigger clubs would go to a team like Portsmouth, Portsmouth, who of course are in the league in League One, and struggle and, and potentially slip up. It can happen. It's the magic of the cup of the cup, right? So it is a relief to see it happen, and we actually got the win. And uh, is it Man City next? I think it is, and that that's 
that's our game in hand in the Premier League. And we're two points if we win away from the top four or top five. So I need to double check it all. But that that's it, we have to really focus now. The FA Cup, sure, we would love to win that. But honestly, top five in the Premier League is the biggest objective. I don't think we'll do it, but we, of course, have to give it a go. Now, you probably noticed my microphone is working again. It's going to be made uh, to, into good use tomorrow. We're going to be back with the Sunderland Road to Glory career mode. Hopefully, you've enjoyed this Operation Arsenal review. A bit longer than usual, actual, actually. That's whatever. Ha whenever I do like a, a chat about each player, it just ten tends to go on a bit longer. But I'm just so relieved we got the win. And I will talk to you guys very soon. And the next Operation Arsenal will be Man City. Gosh, that's going to be an interesting one.